Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments and we're in part three of an 11 part mini series within that playlist. This mini series deals with hierarchical designs and we're partitioning the sum of squares, the total sum of squares for that model. And as a reminder the model is y is equal to x star beta star plus epsilon so it is a linear model. Then we partition the design matrix into a column of ones, uh, you know, a part that deals with factor A, so we call that X alpha, and then a part that deals with the factor B, which we call X beta. The epsilon are normally distributed mean vector zero, covariance matrix sigma squared times I. And I'm going to refer you to parts one and two for more detail about the model. Now, partitioning the total sums of squares. As a reminder, the total sum of squares is y transpose i minus j y. And this is always what it is, where j is, the, is defined like this, and that's the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of 1s. Now, if we add and subtract 0 to this quantity here, it doesn't change it. So we add m and subtract m, and then multiply the y's in, and we get this. Now, we define y or m as the perpendicular projection matrix under the column space of X star, you know, our full design matrix. But in part two, we, we learn the structure of this perpendicular projection matrix to be this. And each of these are little orthogonal subspaces. So if we substitute M in here, then we get this, right? So if we put M in, that J and this J cancel, and what's left over is this piece and this piece. And now in this, the I minus M comes down. Now, this, you know, of course, M is the same perpendicular projection matrix as M beta, which is the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of X beta. Now this is the sum of squares for factor A, and this is the sum of squares for factor B that's nested within factor A, and this is the sum of squared error. Now let's convert these to scalar form, and this is what you always see in books. So the sum of squares for factor A is Y transpose M alpha minus JY, that's what we just determined up here. Now this is an idempotent matrix so we can separate it and then take one piece with this and one piece with that and then sort of untranspose it. It's symmetric. Now in part two we looked at the structure of these mean vectors and we get this. So it's the mean for factor A and minus the grand mean and that's for both of those. And so these are vectors. So then that vector product creates this scalar form, beta n times the sum from i equals 1 to a of the mean of component i, so uh, I, yi dot dot bar minus the grand mean squared. Now I would encourage you to go through this math and recreate that, to, just to make sure that it does equal it. Now the sum of squares for factor b that's nested within a this is the sum of squares in quadratic form. Now this is a per this is item potent, so you can separate them into this. And then y times each of those, we covered the specific form in part two, and and it, we just call it this, you know, notationally. And then we have two vectors product, you know, times each other, vector product, and it creates this vector here, or this scalar form, n times this double sum, you know, the mean of component ij minus the com mean of component i squared. So it creates this, this sum. Now the sum of squares for air is this, y equal to i minus m, but you know, this m is the same as m beta, and it's item potent, so you s separate them. And then you multiply this in, and you get this, right? You get y times i, which is y, and then you get this mean vector for beta, you know, yeah, nested within A. And then this vector product creates this uh, 
sum right here. This and it's a triple sum, right? Because here, this is, we need to index over all three components, and that's what we get. Now let's look at the spec expected values for each of these components. So the expected value for factor A, so sum of squares for alpha, is this y transpose m alpha minus j y. Now I have a I have a, a playlist called quadratic forms, and within that quadratic forms playlist. I have a video called the mean, the variance, and the covariance of quadratic forms. And in there, we, we derive the formula that we're getting ready to use here. So this expected value of the quadratic form is equal to the trace of this matrix times the variance of y. And then it's plus the mean of y, you know, transpose, times that matrix, times the mean of y. So now we start filling in what we know. The variance of y is sigma squared i. So the sigma squared can come out front, i times this, you just get this. The trace of this is a minus 1. And so that's where we get this. Now the mean of y is x star beta star, you know, transpose. And then we get this. And then this is also x star beta star. But instead of writing x star, I wrote, you know, I partitioned it. So this is x star. And the reason we do that is we take this item potent matrix, multiply it, and then so one of it goes with this one, and the other one gets multiplied in here. Now this is a beta vector, right? So it consists of, of mu, alpha 1, alpha 2, all the way to alpha A, and then beta 1, beta 2, beta B. So when you do that multiplication, you know, that those get added together. So then we take this multiplication times each of those. This times a one vector is zero, right? This projects orthogonal, you know, orthogonally to the one vector within with respect to x alpha. So this is zero, but then we just get those back. So that's why carrying things over. Um, this is the second half, and this is the right half. Remember, there's two pieces. So we get m alpha minus j times x alpha alpha, and then plus that that second piece. Now, when you, when you do this matrix, this multiplication, you take this times that, and it ends up with this. And I, we're not going to cover it in this video. I'll give you, uh, I'll kind of give you a hint to what's going on down here, but I encourage you to go through that math and make it be this scalar form. Then this piece times this, we get this. Then this times that plus, you know, this times that. Their, their vector, their scalar, so you could, you know, the transpose is, is are equal. And so that's why we get a 2. So it's this twice. And so that product becomes this. Now, um, so this is the sum of squares, the, the mean sum of squares for alpha. So um, if we take the mean of the mean squared error, so we take the sum of squares for alpha divided by alpha minus 1. So essentially we take this, what we just derived, divided by alpha minus 1, and then take the expected value. So this becomes sigma squared, and then we get 1 over a minus 1 times this piece, and I got too lazy and I didn't write it in, but all that goes there. Now, and to me, this makes total sense because if we assume that the alphas are equal to zero, then this goes away. So the alphas are all equal, so their mean is some constant. But since they're all equal, then this has to be zero, right? And if, if the alphas are equal, then remember, since we're a nested design, the beta coefficients within each level have to you know that they have to average to the effect that effect of you know alpha within that level so this is saying the average of the betas within a level of factor a all have to equal if they equal some sort of grand mean for the betas then that's equivalent to actually saying that the alphas are the same and then of course, if this is true, then th then this is also equal to zero. If those are equal, and this is equal, <clears throat> and this is going to come back in the next video. 
Now the expected value of the sum of squares for beta, which are nested in alpha, is is equal to the trace of the quadratic matrix uh, times the variance of y plus the mean of y times that matrix plus x, you know, the mean of y, which is x star beta star, which is this. So this is actually equal to that, and I forgot a transpose right there. Then when we do this math, so the sigma comes out front, the i times that, you just get that. The trace of this is AB, and the trace of that is A. So this piece becomes this. Then um, this matrix is idempotent, so we, you know, take it time. We take it times itself. Put one of them with this, and the other with this. But when you multiply that matrix in, this is zero, and this is zero, right? It, it projects orthogonally to the one and alpha uh, x alpha space. And then so we just get this and then when you multiply this times this we um, you know so you get this times this but it's a vector so that squared becomes this product here now I kind of hand waved over that but I, it's not a hard calculation but I encourage you to go through that math to make sure it's this so the mean the expected mean squared error would be this. So you divide the, the sum of squares for beta nested within alpha divided by the uh, rank of that quadratic matrix which is a b minus a or if you factor out of a it's a times b minus one. So then we just get sigma squared and then we get this divided by you know what we had. And so if we were to say you know are the betas equal then this is the criteria that we would need to show that all those betas are equal. Now the expected value of the sum of squared error um, is the trace of that quadratic matrix times the variance of y plus the mean of y times that matrix times the mean of y. Well this is zero. This projects orthogonally onto the column space of x star. So it automatically becomes zero. And here the sigma square can come out front, i times this. So the rank of i is abn, the rank of m is ab. And so this is it. So if we look at the expected value of the mean squared error, which is the sum of squares divided by its rank, then um, so you essentially you take this divided by that. Those cancel and you're left with the sigma squared. So it's an unbiased estimate of sigma squared. Now, note that when we up up here we did some of these calculations we took m alpha minus j times x alpha uh, uh, alpha now remember this is a matrix of, of ones you know it's a column of ones column of ones column of ones so when you do this multiplication you're going to get alpha one you know bn times you're going to get alpha two bn times and alpha three three bn times and etc so then when you take J times that matrix, J projects it onto the column space of one. So it's a column of ones times that the, the average of all those, which is just uh, alpha, you know, dot bar. So it's the mean of the alphas. And this one, when you take that and pre-multiply it by X, X alpha, it shoves it in that column space of X alpha. So it's going to be a call a, a, a constant times a column of ones times bn, another constant times a column of ones, you know, bn length. But when when you do that matrix multiplication, it's alpha one times that, alpha two times that, all the way to alpha a times that. And the same way for this here, um, this multiplication ends up being this. It's b one one, you know, times a vector of of ones of length one. B21, B2, B31, etc., all the way to BB1 times a matrix or a column of ones of length n, and, and for each combination of the betas. Then when you do this multiplication, this shoves it on the column space of ones, so it's the mean of all those betas. This shoves it in the column space of X alpha. So it's going to be, notice we have, you know, it's a vector of ones of length bn, vector of length bn, but the constant is the mean of the betas in level one. And here it's the mean 
of the betas for level two within, you know, uh, level two of factor A all the way down. And so this will help you with some of these calculations. Okay, well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.